How does someone step into the wrestling ring and square off with wrestlers more than half his age? Sting is definitely drinking from the Fountain of Youth because at 64 years old, he's performing with the best of them in the AEW and still flying around the ring doing flips, jumping off of ladders and putting his opponents through tables at 64. I'm not even close to Sting's age, more like closer to half of that. I can barely go up the stairs without pulling a muscle. There are few wrestlers in history that have captured the imagination of fans like Sting. Nobody's reinvented themselves more times over multiple different generations. From the colorful face paint to his piercing war cry to the signature Stinger Splash, he's widely recognized as one of the greatest figures in professional wrestling history. Whether you call him the franchise, the icon, the vigilante, or the hooligan, stick around as we dive into the incredible career of the man they call Sting, and the secrets of how he's defied age like no other as he's set to bow out at AEW Revolution 2024. So what makes athletes like Sting hold their physique at the later stages of their life? In order to answer that question, we have to take a look at what made Sting want to stay fit for over 60 years. Before you knew him as Sting, Steve Borden had a foundation rooted in athleticism. Playing football and basketball in high school, he later developed into the world of bodybuilding, even co-owning a Gold's Gym health club. Without any prior interest in professional wrestling, he attended a, in his own words, incredible WWF event in Los Angeles. Angeles, where he witnessed iconic figures like Hulk Hogan, the Iron Sheik, the British Bulldog, and Andre the Giant, which ignited a passion in Borden, propelling him to pursue a career in the industry. He came into the industry in 1985 as a bodybuilder and started with the name Flash as one of two members of Power Team USA in independent All-California Championship Wrestling, teaming with the man who would later become the ultimate warrior, Jim Helwig, before later teaming with Gilbert and Rick Steiner. Moving forward a couple of years and it doesn't get more classic than Surfer Sting. For several years, the bleach blonde, muscle bound, painted face warrior took WCW by storm and became one of the driving forces of that brand as the franchise of WWE. It was during this time that he cemented his legacy and had some of the greatest matches in WCW history and that era of wrestling in general. However, in an interview with Muscle and Fitness in 2014, Sting revealed how he trained in his prime and the impact using steroids had on him and his peers back then. He said this, I never did the power powerlifting thing, but the goal was to lift heavy. Four plates squatting for reps, 4 to 5, 8 to 10, 315 for 20, 225 for 50. Leg extensions, leg curls, and that's how we trained every single week. On the bench, my best was 435. I was younger, and I was on the gas, too. There were guys who weighed a lot less than I did who could easily do that, but I didn't really train for power or strength. I trained for size. That's all I was training for. Sting would go on to credit not being in worse physical shape than many of his peers to his decision to stop using them in 1990 stating, My knees are arthritic now. I don't have a whole lot of flexibility left. Thankfully, I got smart somehow or another in 1990 and stopped taking steroids. Totally stopped. A lot of the guys I ran with all of those years continued to take steroids year after year. Those guys are having their knees and their hips replaced. I'm not saying everybody who gets their knees and their hips replaced took steroids. I just noticed that the guys who did that were too big, too bulky, too heavy, and their body couldn't handle it, and it took its toll. So that was my one saving grace. But I would train differently now. I'm actually doing pretty good for a guy my age. I just turned 54, and I'm still hanging in there. I can move a little bit in the ring. I can't do half of what I used to be able to do, but I get around. Despite this decision, Sting remained in relatively great shape, never looking like he'd let himself go or a shadow of himself through the iconic Crow gimmick in the mid to late 90s. In fact, it's likely Sting's most iconic version of himself, and led to one of the all-time great runs during a special time in pro wrestling, being without a doubt at the center of WCW's success in the Monday Night Wars when they led the WWE for 83 weeks. All in all, a pretty good decision. Previously described by WWE as the greatest wrestler never to have performed for that promotion, the big move finally happened in 2014 as Steen debuted at Survivor Series. But many wondered how, at the age of 54, he'd be able to live up to expectations. Ahead of his debut at WrestleMania 31, Sting went on to detail with Jeff Cavalier of Athlean X on how he prepares for big matches at his age. You gotta prepare for it, but you gotta prepare for it at the right time. You've been talking about periodizing your training regimen, and with Jeff's help, he's helped me dial in something. The idea is to peak at the right time, not to overtrain too early or too late. 
Jeff would go into further detail saying this. He's got to the point now where three to four days remaining before the big event, this is not about setting new personal records in the gym. This is not about heavy lunging, especially a guy who's had some orthopedic issues like knee and shoulders from all the years of wear and tear. This is not about that time. The time here now is mobility and flexibility. We've been working on a lot of stretching, a lot of mobility work, joint mobility work as a physical therapist, to work on his shoulders, knees, and hips. You have to have a periodized approach where there's phases to what you do, leading into the next one. This makes complete sense. Prioritizing, optimizing Sting's in-ring performance and safety is more important than being a jacked, uber-strong muscle monster of yesterday, especially for someone his age who isn't and can't be as active as he used to be. Though after a huge back injury during his second WWE match against Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship, it looked like his age had finally caught up with the Stinger and retirement soon followed. Just when it seemed like the end, AEW's Winter is Coming 2020 brought one of the most incredible moments in professional wrestling. The icon, Sting, made a surprising return that not only marked his comeback to TNT after 18 years, but also reignited the spark of excitement among fans. From the video package that set the stage to the music that sent chills down our spines, the snowy entrance to the iconic call by Tony Schiavone, every element was executed to perfection. It felt like Batman returning to Gotham. Them. So, surely, having retired after injury and being over 60 now, this was just for a non-wrestling role, right? No, not at all. It's been a revitalized run for the veteran who's competed in 23 AEW matches, winning every single one and not looking out of place at all. Acting as a mentor to Darby Allin and a partner with Adam Copeland has proven to be a great role for Sting. Although used sparingly, he's absolutely shown light onto Allin and passed the torch. He's embraced Allin's unique personality, becoming in tune with his effective vignettes and perfectly complementing his in-ring style with something more classic. His matches have even still been incredible fun even though they're booked to protect the aging wrestler. He feels like a big deal despite being on TV often, as he doesn't hog the spotlight. And he's even taken some crazy bumps throughout, notably diving from an arena balcony through three tables at Revolution 2022. I don't know how he handles those types of stunts in the ring at his age, but it looks like his fitness regimen makes his body endure all of those bumps along the way. At AEW All-In 2023 in London, Sting and Darby featured in a coffin match against Christian Cage and Swerve Strickland, in front of the largest pro wrestling attendance of all time at the iconic Wembley Stadium. Tony Khan spared no expense to create a spectacular entrance for Sting at the event, featuring his classic WCW Metallica theme, Seek and Destroy. The sight of 81,000 fans on their feet with lights filling the sky all for Sting was truly incredible, as the 64-year-old legend put on yet another iconic display in a moment that just a few years prior would have felt impossible. Possible, but the Stinger defies age once again. On the October 19th Dynamite, Sting announced his upcoming retirement would be at AEW Revolution 2024, marking the end of his illustrious 39-year wrestling career. In March of next year, the Stinger goes out on his own terms. From his early days as the muscle icon surfer Sting, captivating audiences with his charisma and athleticism, to defying age and expectations in his 60s with a triumphant return to the ring in AEW, Sting has been a true icon in every sense. Almost nobody has managed to reinvent themselves this many times and remain relevant over a near 40-year period, and competing in five different decades in the way Sting has, it's time for the Stinger to bow out. And though it's hard to say goodbye to an icon, we know for sure he'll be cherishing every moment until his legendary career concludes at AEW Revolution 2024. So if you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a like, don't forget to subscribe, and let us know in the comments your favorite memories and version of the man they call Sting.